One, two, three, starting. So this is going to be a slightly different episode, a bit of a personal episode today. We're going to be talking about NDTV, which is uh, now more or less come under control of Gautam Adani's company, his uh, media company, because Pranoy and Radhika Roy, who started NDTV, have exited the main owner entity, the holding company, RRPR Holdings. They have exited it and they've come out of the board. And NDTV's big star, Ravish Kumar, has quit the company. He will no longer be seen on NDTV India, NDTV's Hindi channel at 9 p.m. when he would start that show and millions of people would actually tune in. He's now, as of this morning, announced that he's uh, going to be much more active on his YouTube channel. And to actually chat about it, not really talk much, uh, um, not talk about lofty things. I have with me Trina. Trina denies that she's a <laughs> reporter, but I know she's gone and reported several times. I think you went to Maharashtra, Trina, during the yeah, farmers' during the farmers protest. Yeah. Farmers protest. And uh, Trina informed me today that she's now 30. And yes. I was <laughs> under the impression she's 20, which, which you tend to, you know, you see younger people when you're my age at 50 and you think everyone's 20. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, Trina, you wouldn't have seen NDTV, you would have been too young when NDTV used to, when NDTV really became a household name, which was with a show called The World This Week. When yeah. People knew about Pranoy Roy, he used to come as a cephologist, he used to anchor the um, election shows on Doordarshan. He did that in, I think from 1980 onwards he did it. Yeah. And uh, But uh, The World This Week was a turning point. It brought international production quality to a current affairs program mm. on Indian television. And um, if you walked out on Friday evenings in the late 80s, early 90s, around, uh, I don't actually remember what time it came, I think 9.30 p.m. it used to come. And you would hear the title track of World This Week and you know everyone's watching it. Yeah. I, it, it was almost like what you did, I, again, you would not have an idea if you went out on Sunday mornings in the 80s when there was Ramayan. Yeah. You could actually hear that all around you as well. If you went, uh, it, every household which had a TV had it on. And similarly, World This Week was like that. And that kind of defined NDTV. But I, I want to know, you, you were, uh, you know, you probably started watching TV news sometime in the mid-2000s, I would assume, or early 2000s at best, right? Yeah. I mean, I probably watched it earlier, but yeah. didn't make much sense of it. Yeah, it was I... on in the house yeah. probably, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And... Uh... So what were, when you think about NDTV, now you're a journalist, yeah. right? A profession you always wanted to <laughs> <laughs> join up at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, neither, to be honest, neither did I think I'd ever be a journalist, yeah. right? As I was kind of... It was a job I suddenly got, I went and did it. But, yeah. uh, but uh, when you thought, think of NDTV, what do you think? You're a young person. Yeah. Right? What image do you have? Uh, I think one thing that's always been true, I mean, especially in recent years with mm. all other news channels uh, turning sort of into like a drama show, mm. people screaming and all of that, it's people, I think, especially of my generation have turn to NDTV as something that's a reliable, like mm. in terms of non-digital media, TV mm. media, it has always been uh, a place which is reliable, somewhere where you hear, and especially Ravish, like you said, is yeah. someone people always turn to, to get real news. But these would largely be liberals like you, right? Left liberals, yeah. people yeah. like that. Because a large number of people who are... Yeah. Uh, young people who are not in that space, either don't watch but news think, at all. I think, for yeah. example, for Ravish, it would not just be limited to liberals. Hmm. You think I that think, it, there's a wider view? I think there. there is a wider view. Even the hatred that he yeah. gets from the right wing yeah. quite often. Um, but 
you is this in the post Modi period that you started watching NDTV or did you know about NDTV even before that? I mean, I, you were pretty young. Uh, I mean, I did, but the thing is that I also grew up in a house where everyone was a journalist. Okay. Right. So, uh, no. so I don't know if I can take that as a benchmark. Well, but of, that's a that's a good enough yeah. thing that I, I think yeah, our so viewers me, would be interested in knowing what it's like to be in a journalist. I didn't yeah. grow up in a journalistic yeah. household, so. Yeah. So for me, for example, especially even now, when on election days, like you said, like election mm. result days, mm. it's always like I wake up to the sound of yeah. NDTV. Yeah. Mm. Like you wake up and the TV is on constantly and you're yeah. seeing counting going on and all of yeah. that. So yeah. I actually did watch it from like a younger age. But like I said, I probably didn't make much sense of it. Yeah, but it was there. It, it was, was there. It's, it was like a presence It's always in your been house. there. Yeah. And even now, like even here in NewsClick, when we do uh, election counting days, when we do shows, mm. when we have to take feed from like whenever we had to, I mean, obviously we use the election commission website, but whenever mm. we have to use feed from any channel, it was always NDTV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not running, trying to get viewers by falsely giving data yeah. Yeah. before it's even arrived, exactly. which some channels tend to do. Yeah. Um, all right, so that, that's an interesting thing. But uh, before, uh, you know, before 2014, there was a certain space, right? And after that, the space has changed because I would say from 2013 onwards, there was a very strong, um, rise of the right wing in television news and um, 2014 is a turning point in that sense that yeah. uh, NDTV is the only one which continued to be more or less on the path that it did. There were, of course, uh, there were certain kinds of, you know, uh, I wouldn't say compromises, but one had to be much more careful. Yeah. I mean, um, I uh, headed NDTV India from 2014 to 2018 and during the Modi years yeah. and uh, I, I started in 20, 2008 and there was a clear difference in the atmosphere mm -hmm. and I think that is what has come to a point of culmination today mm -hmm. where we knew things are moving to a space where if you spoke up against the government mm -hmm. or you were going to face something you were, it, it wasn't as if the government said oh we don't like you yeah. It's like, there will be something that will happen yeah. to you. Whether that happens or not is not necessarily true. It's just the fear, yeah. right? What people call the chilling effect. Yeah. You know, it's just that the fear that this exists. But I just want to quickly go back for our viewers. Are you at all aware of uh, how private television emerged in India? No, not at all. Not at all. Okay, so uh, this is a interesting thing to look at, you know, because uh, there were private entertainment um, production houses which were producing serials for Doodarshan. Mm. But when it came to news, I think it was only 1995 that a private news channel, or was it 96, I might be not entirely sure, either Narasimha Rao government or the United Front government which, which came in mm. and they gave uh, contracts to NDTV and to uh, India Today okay. right, to produce news bulletins. Before that, right, I, you might have seen it in movies. Right? Hmm. Um, I don't know if you've seen this movie called, what is it called with, uh, you know, Abhay Deol, Rithik Roshan and... Zindagi Na Milegi. Zindagi, yeah. yeah. In that, there's a place where Rithik Roshan... They're talking about the Doodarshan thing. Doodarshan tune. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Have you ever heard the Doodarshan yeah, tune? Yeah, yeah. I have, right? I have. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. <laughs> So that is how it was and there was yeah. a news reader came and with a very stentorian voice would and there were great stars at that time right Tejeshwar Singh uh, mm. he unfortunately uh, passed away there were people like Gitanjali Ahir and many others mm. right but the the way in which they read the news was very uh, formal so it would be like this is the news read by yeah right and uh, there were uh, th there were set pieces and usually the news was about the Prime Minister has gone to Tehran mm. and done this uh, and then you would see those clips or this thing has been inaugurated and there would be so a little bit of international news, hardly any pictures, yeah. most of it was read out, right? 
And earlier there was no what uh, today everyone knows about auto cue or teleprompter mm. because it's on every phone and everyone's making TikTok <laughs> and stuff. Not TikTok anymore. Sadly, I was yeah. a TikTok addict and maybe it's good. <laughs> then. But Instagram <laughs> videos are being made. Yeah. Right with teleprompters. Uh, Doordarshan actually for a long time didn't have a teleprompter. So people uh, looked up and sometimes just read it straight out huh. of cue cards, right? And um, what was done was that private television t uh, producers, NDTV was one of them, and uh, India, Today. India Today, maybe it was already TV Today, I don't know, because they produced a video shows. Mm. Have you ever seen a VHS tape? I have. You have? Yeah. All right. So some of our viewers would have and some might not have. You have to, those were the old days of a VCR in which you yeah. put in a tape and you watch movies, very bad quality. <laughs> and actually Hindustan Times and uh, um, India Today produced um, these VHS tape news shows, mm. like current affairs and news shows once a week. And you subscribe to it and the tape came home. And oh. you put it into a... Uh, VHS yeah, to, and you watched it and the show they produced was called News Track. It used to be done by Madhu Trehan. So they had that kind of background there and uh, and many, I, I think a few people in NDTV like Vikram Chandra used to work in News Track for a while. We had a great camera person called Ajmal Jami who came from News Track. Uh, so uh, News Track had some uh, television um, experience, NDTV had television experience mm. based on what it was doing as the world this week, which was not Indian news at all. Mm. It was always clips of international news. So there would be international politics, there would be sports, science, right, music, art and stuff like that. Yeah. And a new news bulletin was being produced. I think it was called the news tonight. And it okay. was very different from anything that we had seen. Mm. Right? And today everyone knows about what a P2C is or a piece to camera, yeah. right? Where the reporter looks into the camera and says something from the field. That is completely new for Indian viewers. They've mm -hmm. never seen anything like this. No. Right? So Aaj Tak was the name coined for the Hindi news bulletin which would come at, I think, 9.30 and 9 o'clock was, or maybe it's 9.30 and 10. I don't yeah. exactly remember, right? And uh, Pranod Roy would anchor the English news, which was being produced by NDTV for Doordarshan. Yeah. And T TV Today would produce what they called Aaj Tak, right? Okay. From which the channel Aaj Tak was launched in 2000. Hmm. Right? Uh, but earlier it was just a show. And it used to be anchored by a very legendary Hindi journalist called S.P. Singh, who, uh, again, I think died on the job. He was very, uh, he died of some sort of a hemorrhage and a stroke. He became, and it produced very good Hindi television journalists. The difference uh, which one Aaj Tak uh, senior journalist told me later on was that we called ourselves the TikTok, uh, not TikTok, the Mickey Mouse <laughs> studio. Right? Okay. They considered NDTV to have great production values mm. and Aaj Tak had low, lesser production values but in some ways it was more nimble. Right? Mm. It was less uh, formal. NDTV still followed the old... In fact, had a very BBC influence mm. for a very long time. And you must have watched BBC bulletins, which continued to yeah. be, in today's world, pretty boring yeah. to watch. Right? <laughs> They're trying to change, but yeah. I think they have a very uh, set style, yeah. which they follow. And NDTV was kind of modeled on that. In fact, Yeah, and they also had that really formal uh, way of announcing the news. I mean, not yeah, now, yeah. but earlier. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because I watched a few clips of, yeah. like, for example... Uh, on uh, about the monarchy and stuff mm. and there's always this like the queen has like As the way BBC, of reading yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's a very yeah, similar yeah yeah i think uh, the so bbc uh, i think NDTV was uh, trying to make a slight change because i know that uh, uh, doc uh, pranay roy himself dr roy was influenced by some of the very great uh, american uh, anchors dan mm. rather for instance and i think walter conkright who was a very famous uh, news anchor and what NDTV did was it changed the language of TV news completely. Right? Mm. I, the day I joined NDTV which was in 1999, how old were you? Seven at that time. Right? 1999, yeah. yeah, seven. Yeah, seven. But I joined in sometime in February so you might not have been seven. Then. I was seven. Oh, okay, if great. it was February. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the day I joined uh, uh, you know, after a couple of days, I was given the task of writing a small script. It was a, in those days, there were these MiG-21s which used to crash all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? 
Hmm. And there's a movie about it also. I think Rang Deva Rang Deva Santi. Yeah. Yeah. So in those days they would crash, and uh, so I had to write that the black box and the black box had to be found, and you know. Yeah. So I wrote something that the black box has been recovered, right? And uh, Dr. Rao used to come to the uh, newsroom at about six o'clock for his nine o'clock show and r write all everything, right? Mm. He would write, rewrite all the scripts and stuff like Dr. Rao and Mizra would sit and rewrite scripts and they would, not the content, but the style. Mm. And also he would ask hundred questions before clearing a story. And he would write what we called anchor links, which is what links one story to the next, right? Yeah. And uh, in those days, all stories were packaged. They were individual things which went on a tape. Mm. And you put in a tape, you played it, there were these four tape players. And you put one in, then the, uh, when it ended, the anchor looked at the camera, read out their link, and then the next tape mm. was rolled, right? I have a good story about that, I'll tell you at some point. Now, um, so Dr. I would say that, who has written this? And I said, I have. So he said, I had written, the black box has been recovered. So he said, never recover anything, yeah, just find it. <laughs> <laughs> so that stayed with me, that television actually is a space where we have to deformalize, remove yeah. formality, Simplify, right? yeah. and make it everyday language. And yeah. I learned how to write scripts and how to basically speak in the way in which we normally speak, which is not yeah. the way we write. Yeah, right? not at all, yeah. Because when we write, we usually um, uh, complete sentences. Yeah. We always do. Yeah. But when we speak, like we are doing right now, yeah. we are speaking in clauses. Right? Yeah. And this is something that I learned at NDTV and the good script writers who wrote very well, uh, Barkha, Srinivasan Jain, they were good writers. They all wrote in clauses and Dr. Rai was really outstanding when it came to writing hmm. his scripts and he even wrote down his asides, his quips and put it in brackets, hmm. which when he read out would look like he's cracking something which is yeah. not written there, but he would actually write, write and down. produce and... So there was a bar which was set at, which was very high. That is the stylistic part. And it changed news TV in India. Yeah. In 1990, I think then there was a bit of a problem with, uh, either 90, uh, 98 probably. And there was a problem with the government switching off NDTV things and they moved to Star. Star <laughs> gave the slot to, this is Rupert Murdoch, hmm. to NDTV to do the same news so this was the first time that a private channel was being allowed to put news on, yeah. right? No longer on a government platform, right? Uh, but even Star was under certain uh, conditions that the nine o'clock uh, bulletin, all scripts had to be cleared by Star, had a set of people who all came from Doordarshan. Yeah. Right? And they were very, they had good points. They were never, and there were certain rules that you can't push anything which is superstitious, Hmm. unscientific and stuff like that, right? Hmm. And in fact, it was such that there was a, uh, I'm ju jumping the gun. So later on hmm. in 98, a full-fledged channel was launched, which is Star News, yeah. which was owned by Rupert Murdoch. The content was provided by NDTV. Okay. And I joined NDTV the next year, uh, a few months later, actually. Yeah. And uh, we used to work for Star News, right? And uh, the... Uh, you know, in the f one, uh, one year, every April Fool's Day, mm. there would be some fake story okay. right, on the bulletin. The last story would basically be something fake. And one of the stories now was I, male every pregnancy. Now every day is April Fool's Day. <laughs> yeah, every day is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the show was about uh, the, the story that the first male pregnancy, right? Okay. Mm. And there was one producer called Gunjan who, uh, you know, they, he was made to lie down in one of the clinics and yeah. one of the doctor, very famous gynecologist was convinced to do it. Yeah. And I think Barkha was the reporter and Gunjan was saying, yes, the first thing I noticed is that my beard fell off and stuff like that. And the star, you know, the checker said, this is a very good story, this has happened. <laughs> so, he said, oh, this is fantastic science, it's really. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, luckily he didn't say oh this is totally unscientific we can't show it yeah. but the checks were actually good hmm. they were not uh, uh, but uh, what I'm saying is soon what happened is that 
news TV moved far beyond where it used to be. NDTV was essentially an English news channel which yeah. catered to a very small space, mm. right? influential space, yeah. but a very small space. And maybe people who were uh, had no other option, they still watched NDTV, right? So it's, uh, NDTV was essentially English news and every half, back half hour was English news which was being translated into Hindi. Mm. There were very few reporters who were mainly Hindi news reporters, mm. right? And that too, they were there because they were good at it, not because they were taken for the Hindi bulletin. They yeah. reported for the English channel, yeah. right? But often their stories were being written in English, but it was being translated. translated yeah. And one of the translators was Ravish, right? Yeah. He was on the translation desk. Hmm. And I think in his latest video, he said that he started off, uh, uh, you know, his job was to look at letters sent by viewers hmm. and choose a few letters which would be read, read out, out in the morning show. August 1996, NDTV was connected to the group of NDTV. August 1996, in the translator, in the form of a form, but in that time, I was sitting here for some months. I was sitting here for some months and uh, uh, so the space actually changed gradually. Mm. Uh, as it expanded and there are interesting things here because when you have watched had, have you watched any Hindi news channel not apart from only Ravish no but you would have an idea as to what is shown on there or no yeah like the Sansani types and yeah, all yeah, I've seen yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. those I've mm. seen India TV India and, TV yeah huh. so there was a it was actually a revolutionary change brought in in 2003 by Star News, which was now star, star, called ABP News, because mm. NDTV broke away from Murdoch and mm. launched its own channels, NDTV 24-7 and NDTV India, mm. English and Hindi. And star, uh, Murdoch then launched a separate channel, which was Star News. Yeah. Right? Uh, and Star News did this great revolution. It came up with two shows which were blockbuster rating. It mm. had blockbuster rating. Nothing else worked on Star News. Yeah. No one watched it. Huh. Those two shows are fan did extremely well and in some ways they changed the nature of news TV completely in India. Hmm. And uh, um, one, as you said, Sansani. Yeah. Right? Um, basically, I don't, do you have any idea about something called Manohar? I, I think the other day we were discussing about true crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. You were saying why has true crime become so... Why are people so interested in true crime? And I, yeah. since we were thinking of doing that show, I started doing some research and I went to this academic site, JSTOR, to mm. download. And I saw that there were some uh, papers from 1976 that why have people become so interested in true crime? <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. And Sansani was partly a true crime show. Yeah. So what it did was that it took uh, these crime stories and completely converted them into almost cinematic experience yeah, like with the reenactment and all of that reenactment yeah. and all that and it had massive viewership yeah. it had huge viewership and uh, um, and it also had something called saas bahu or sazish yeah i remember that right? yeah. saas bahu or sazish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. again a great innovation yeah i don't think either of these have space in a news channel but nevertheless these are great innovations because the system allowed them to come in yeah this was essentially, it started off as being a summary of the previous day's huh. soaps. Yeah. So, Saas bhi kabhi bahu thi. Yeah. What happened yesterday? <laughs> so, if you missed it, you could watch Saas bahu or Saasish. And then it became so popular that they set up a full team. They yeah. would go to what they called OTS on the, uh, the set. The right? yeah. They would go and interview these people. Yeah. This was, hmm. in Hindi news, and I kid you not, in 2008-9, this was the highest watched Hindi news show across the day. Wow. Not 9 p.m., 10 p.m., no, 2 p.m., Saas, Bahu, or Sazish. Right? Yeah. Not for ABP News or Star News, for every channel. Yeah. yeah. And you could see that normally what happens, people watch news early in the morning, leave home, right? So you see that bump, right? And then what happens is that viewership drops completely. Mm. If you look at English news, there's a bump at the beginning of the day and then it drops and completely. Prime time. 
and then it rises from about 7.30 onwards and then drops again at 11.30. So yeah. you have these two slots, four hours here, two hours here. Yeah. Hindi news is different. It goes up and again in the morning there's a certain thing which again NDTV never did. Yeah. Then it drops, goes up at 2 o'clock, 2 to 3, hmm. right? Has been extended to 2.30 and I, I'm talking about things from about four years ago. So I don't know what how it's changed. And then it would pick up again like a normal thing. Hmm. This particular afternoon slot was filled by channels with Bahua Sazish. Then came things like Dharm, hmm. right? Which would be, and there were also shows where they told you that today you shouldn't eat pumpkin <laughs> <laughs> if you're of some, yeah. you know, I don't know, if you're Sagittarius, <laughs> then this is not a good day to eat pumpkin. You should yeah. stick to Karela. Mm. Right? And people watch these shows, right? Yeah. But there's no space in news. Right? Yeah. But you see, no one was actually watching. Oh, sorry. Okay. <coughs> alarm. Yeah, alarm. It's a Silent, Silent alarm. Baja. Mm. <laughs> Meeting. Meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think the... Um, so, as I was saying that, you know, the thing is that uh, when one, uh, I think we should keep this in the show. Okay. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll keep it in the show. We are keeping this in the show. All right. So, um, the, the, um, the point is that this changed the nature of television, mm. right? News television. People realize that to get ratings, you have to do these things. Crime, cinema, cricket. Yeah. And cosmology, We're not mm. cosmology in the sense of but yeah, astrology. Yeah. Astrology, right? yeah. In fact, astrology became a big chunk of morning shows. Mm. Right? And uh, now, when you look at ratings as such, it looks like that these channels have huge viewership. Mm. What's happening? Right? They've captured the viewership, but they've captured the viewership by basically diluting news. Yeah. Once that happens, what happens to prime time? Obviously, you're tempted to do the same thing in prime time, right? Yeah, exactly. So channels went to that as well. So this was a dilution process which essentially weakened NDTV because NDTV didn't follow that route at all. Yeah. Right? And this weakening actually over a period of time along with the rigging of, um, you know, viewership rigging by ratings rigging yeah. basically made it difficult for NDTV to sustain itself. And I'm talking about a period after the general financial crisis, global financial crisis of 2008-9, when, yeah. you know, valuations of companies went down, it became difficult to sustain itself from advertising, right? Mm. So it started making losses. And when you make losses, what happens? You and either succumb and do what others are doing, or you say, no, we are going to stick to what journalism is and should be, mm. but we don't have money, so we can't send journalists out. Yeah. We can't hire more people. And if someone leaves, you're not going to stop them. Hmm. Right, and at some point we'll have to probably let people go because otherwise we can't pay the salaries. Yeah. So today, what we're seeing, and uh, I think this is a process which started long ago. This is a process where news TV ceded space to entertainment. Yeah. And this is not unique to India. This is true for the yeah, US yeah, as yeah, well. Of course, yeah. Across, right? Yeah. And ceded space to entertainment, and then gradually stopped journalism altogether. Mm. Right? And uh, news click sends you out to the field, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not an easy thing. Mm. I'm sure it was tough yeah. being there. You know, uh, I mean, I stopped being a reporter because I didn't want to go out in the heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, so it's not easy. It's a tough job. NDTV really pampered its reporters for a very long time. Mm. Right? And... Uh, uh, we used to be put up in great hotels wherever we went, where we would go to sleep and come back. Yeah. Uh, NDTV reporters and camera crew used to be given, you know, food would be sent mm. to them every evening. Snacks yeah. would go out and people from other channels would say, what is happening? Yeah. As a part of the cost-cutting exercise, I was among those who said that we should stop this and the Royal said, no, this is one of the things NDTV does, give food to... Yeah. You know, reporters and crew. Hmm. Right? We can't stop it, whatever it costs. So there are these certain things which NDTV continue to do in the good practices of an organization which made it financially weaker. Yeah. Right? Uh, the average salary in NDTV was much higher than any other place, but the top salaries were lower, hmm. which means that it was giving many more people 
right? better, yeah. better salaries. The yeah. ratio of the which lowest to the highest, the case. which is not the case yeah. anywhere, right? The ratio of the lowest to the highest uh, salary was much lower. Uh, mm. The highest to the lowest salary was much lower yeah. in NDTV than any other place, right? Mm. So median salaries were higher in NDTV than any other place. And NDTV carried that legacy, which meant that its salary bill was very high. Yeah. Right? Uh, and once the global financial crisis happened, you could no longer leverage your stocks to raise funds. Hmm. Right? So th that's the process of weakening that started right? for NDTV, which ultimately is resulting in this, that uh, uh, the Roy's had to pledge a part of their shares to take a loan. And yeah. that those shares are now by default hmm. being taken over by Adani's yeah. uh, media arm and therefore whether they like it or not, whether they want it or not, it's gone. Yeah. Right? This is one part of it. But, uh, you know, the other part of it is the nature of television news itself. Hmm. Right? And even here, NDTV tried to st stick to that path for a very long time, but couldn't, as I said, because of shortage of money, because of shortage yeah. of viewership. Hmm. Right? NDTV had tried to revive the 9 o'clock news bulletin several times, hmm. but it gets no viewership, right? Yeah. What happens is that people now come home and they say, I'm too tired and, you know, there's a Bengali word called adda. Hmm. Adda means you yeah. sit and chat like yeah, we're doing yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. And you have your cup of tea or something stronger <laughs> and you basically talk about things which you know nothing about but with a lot of authority, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, that is what I think most viewers want to do when they come home. At 9 o'clock, they want that adda or they want ammunition yeah. for that adda. And if you don't provide that, then they're not going to watch you. They want a vicarious sense of being in a very heated debate yeah. by watching that, right? Yeah. And Fox News in the US pioneered that, right? Uh, Arnab Goswami copied it and others yeah. followed suit, right? But that is what it has become. And... You know, one of the things about liberals is like you're sitting here and thinking that kya bakwas kar hai, yaad nahi, right? <laughs> we tend to um, question all the time, right? Hmm. We are much more un liberals or left wing people are more likely to be skeptical of things yeah. than those on the right wing. Because the nature of right wing uh, identity is to follow someone who's an authority. Hmm. Right? You accept loyalty, right? Respect. These are part of the which is not really there in yeah. left. And most of the time, one would think that, oh, what does that guy know? I know better. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is our attitude. Right? And uh, that makes it much easier for this kind of, you know, top-down discourse to be controlled by the right yeah. rather than the left. Yeah. Because if you sit and watch an anchor who's a liberal and you say, oh, he's pretty good. Hmm. But he really didn't say this wasn't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is our tendency. Whereas a right-wing viewer tend to, tends to follow, accept, and, and that's what got yeah. Arnab Goswami's following. And then uh, the Z chap who's moved to uh, yeah, Aztec, yeah. I forget his name, the same uh, kind of... Uh -huh. even I'm forgetting it right now. Sudhir Chaudhary. Sudhir, Chaudhary. Sudhir Chaudhary. Yeah. The following that he had, right? Yeah. He has, I think he was the most watched... Uh, you know, anchor at nine o'clock at one point. Hmm. And you can get away by saying anything. Yeah. No one's questioning you, especially when you are this back. Kind by of idol state. worship also. Of, yeah. yeah. Massive. You see that with Ravish also. I think it exists much more in uh, in the what one can call the vernacular space. Yeah. At least in the Hindi world, I can't speak about other. I do see that kind of hero worshiping yeah. that one yeah, sees. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely right? there. Yeah. It's there. It does not that's kind of thing does not exist in English because, hmm. again, those who are English-speaking or their second language is English, their mother tongue, what they speak in, but in public space where they speak English, like you and me, yeah. and my first language is Bengali, but my yeah. second language would be English before Hindi. Although the 10 years I spent in NDTV India made my Hindi much better. Much better. But yeah. you know, when I used to come and record here, yeah. you know, I've forgotten his name, there was a camera person here who would always correct my Hindi. Mm -hmm. I think so. He would always yeah. say, hota hai, ki hota hai. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Gender mistakes more. that yeah. Bengalis always do. But what happens is that, again, in this 
uh, English space, we are less likely to hero worship because we consider ourselves to be heroes. Yeah. We consider ourselves to be empowered, right? Yeah. Those who are disempowered, disenfranchised, which is much more in uh, Indian um, vernacular languages, although English hmm. is also an Indian language, right? Uh, they tend to follow. Again, I'm speaking more about the Hindi belt. I don't know how far that is true for other places as well. Yeah. And this kind of stardom actually increased much more in Hindi than in English. Hmm. And I think the only comparable person in English would be Arnab Goswami yeah. in that sense, right? And he did very well in Hindi as far as I I can, uh, I haven't watched him, but apparently yeah. Hindi Republic used huh. to anchor as well and okay, got yeah, a lot, yeah, of, lot of viewership there. Hmm. So this is a change where journalists moved from the field to the studio, hmm. right? Because the studio got you ratings, Yeah. right? The people were willing to uh, sponsor studio-based shows. And you had to get that money because costs were very high. Yeah. Right. And they weren't willing to sponsor news shows. Hmm. Right? There was no brand identity they got from a news show. Right? Yeah. But if, let's say, Arnab or uh, Sudhir Chaudhary or Ravish came on a show and before that there was a sponsor's logo which ran, then there's a yeah. uh, identification that is so. That is what pushed uh, journalism out of the farmers' protest uh, hmm. from there into the studio, right? Yeah. Chat became yeah. the way to look at things rather than uh, going out going in the field, field and seeing yeah. things. And frankly, there's it limits. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I am guilty of doing that as well because I uh, was the person who started Ravish Ki Report in NTV India, hmm. took Ravish away from the studio and sent him into the field. He had to do hmm. just one show a week. Hmm. And it was a great show. It did extremely well. But we got greedy and brought him into the studio, back into the studio into the 9 p.m. show, mm. right? And he said, this is what will work. And Ravish himself had to move away from the field, field yeah. which is a different Ravish from what he became as an opinion, right? Yeah. Now, these are, this is an inevitable thing that happened to everyone, whether it is uh, Arnab himself, mm. whether it is Barkhadat, whether it is Srinivasan Jain, who continues to still do a certain kind of uh, uh, thing hmm. and uh, Rajdeep or any of the people who you see yeah. on uh, various channels have all become studio people hmm. right? they're all news anchors there's yeah. no journalism left so yeah. in a sense journalism was dead already but what was happening in the studios there was a certain degree of balance there was a certain the nature of NDTV's studio shows was to question yeah right and not question the opposition, question those in power. Hmm. Sometimes question the opposition as well, because yeah. ultimately, if you look at it, the opposition is also, in a sense, part of the state. All political parties are. From yeah. the, so you have to do that as well. It's not as if the opposition says something, you completely let them go, right? Yeah. Uh, but your main objective was always to question institutions, to question those who are ruling you. Hmm. Right? That is completely gone. Yeah. That is completely gone. And... This again, I will say, has is uh, partly because of the decline of revenues. As revenues went down, as channels could no longer, uh, you know, uh, pay for journalism, they d became more and more dependent on Ads. advertisers yeah. and more and more dependent on corporate uh, owners who would come and bail them out by taking, uh, buying stake, whether yeah. it is. The Network 18 group, which was bought by uh, Reliance, hmm. uh, or whether it is uh, TV Today, which had uh, a certain amount of stake was bought by, I think, the Aditya Birla group. Again, these are all things which had to be done to raise funds, to pay for just basic everyday news gathering. Yeah. That was one process by which corporate control of news started taking place. And, you know, the corporate... Don't, don't have to come to your newsroom. Yeah. You already start self-censoring when mm. that happens. Yeah. You say, oh, am I going to really write against uh, Ambani or Adani or this Birla or Tata? What will happen? Who knows? Yeah. What? Yeah, the fear sets in. Yeah. yeah, you're censoring yourself because, you know, this advertiser might say, ye to mere khilaf, unho ne story kar diya hai, main nahi karunga. Yeah. And uh, then the sales guys come and it, 
luckily it never happened in NTU because a very strong Chinese wall hmm. was set up, which is why sales people never lasted in NTU. They would come and say, this is a terrible place yeah. we're going. Right? We're being asked to wrap up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we are being asked to wrap up. So we'll quickly <laughs> wrap up. So what I'm saying is that that process basically uh, has Change. led to where we yeah. are today, right? Yeah. The fact that corporate control and corporates always want to curry favor with governments and that allows the government to enter the space and do what it has done today to yeah. various entities. So yeah. that's the way it is. And I guess there are many more stories to tell, but yeah. not another enough time. Yeah, yeah. Another time. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, if you have any more questions, do write to us and do comment on this video. Yeah. Do um, subscribe to our channel, News Click. We do great stuff and uh, uh, share this video with your friends.